What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Cash Game Review Session. Today we've got another video from Ignition again. Uh, this time it's 5 Zoom from our friend Tyler. Be sure to subscribe to the channel guys if you haven't done so already. We release these videos every Thursday and we have ACR highlights every Sunday, assuming that I can keep up with it. And as always, enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one. Right, so yeah, so we're going to be using uh, the Razor Edge Rangers. This is the first time I'm going to be doing this, so hopefully it'll be... I, I, it won't be too much of a struggle for me. Using Poker Snowy, as in Poker Snowy Rangers. 3x open, I don't hate for what it's worth. So I think opening 3x at the lower stakes is absolutely fine. I want to say... So I was having a discussion in the Discord about simplification of things pre-flop in certain circumstances to make life a lot easier. So if you can simplify some things pre-flop and then concentrate on other things when you're learning, I think that's a good idea. So going the same amount from every position instead of what I do, which is smaller from the first two positions and bigger from the bottom and the cutoff, and also just going, yeah, just going one size, but also not having anything that you're opening a certain percentage. So not having to randomize to see if you're going to open five, six suited under the gun, for example. So for example, with the bluff, the spot ranges will have like half of whatever, whereas the open ranges here are just pure or none, which I think is a really good idea. I think when you're learning as you're coming up through the stakes, this 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 course is based for people up to 50 NL, I think, or maybe up to 100 NL. So this is really, really good for what I'm doing, which is reviewing lower stakes than the stakes that I play. But I think that these are, are really good. I think these are pretty much perfect. What I like about these as well is that the small blind is less than the button. So if we looked at the bluff the spot ones, it was opening so much shit blind versus blind, Whereas here, it's opening way less of this year. It was actually having all of these as borderline opens. Okay, so we're just raising 3x, which I think at these stakes is absolutely fine. Um, we should be opening maybe a little bit tighter. So like opening under the gun, I probably wouldn't 3x if we're opening, you know, these. But I think this is a, an okay base. And as long as we're not deviating too far from this, as long as, you know, if you're not opening ace 10, that's fine. But if you're not opening ace jack, it's not fine kind of thing. But we'll see. Let's uh, let's let's jump in and have some fun. So we three x tens, we three x jacks. Okay. We want to ISO here, and I think going four big blinds makes sense. I think as long as we're going anywhere between three point five and e even three, anywhere between three and five is okay. I think three's a bit small. I think five's a bit big. But as long as it's between that, I think it's fine. All right. So the king jack suited here. We have. I mean basically an easy call it kind of sucks that uh, he's basically playing a full stack but so if we just if we let, let's 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 delve into the ranges because i want to see if i can work this out okay so we're calling three bets with all the green we're four betting with the red which is ridiculously fucking small what how are we where's our bluffs maybe maybe we just don't bluff in poker anymore in 2021 nobody fucking else does the point of this is being, though, that we are doing a lot of calling and we're not doing a lot of four betting. We're mainly four betting these hands, and so we should have some blossom something like Ace-5 suited. I do want to ideally, you know, say that we can simplify it, and I don't want to get into the, the mindset of saying, oh, yeah, let's let's four bet this 25% of the time and get you to use a randomizer to figure that one out. But I think if you just wanted to four bet like Ace-5 suited, because that's only four combos. So even then, we, we have 16 combos for value, effectively. And then, unless you're accounting ace-king suited as a bluff. Anyway, the point of this was to see what we're doing with king-jack suited. This is slightly different because it's a squeeze. But if we'd have just gone like 3x here, he's making it 12. Like, we're still calling anyway. It's a bit more annoying because obviously the stack to pot ratio is going to be smaller. And the raise is bigger. But we're still going to be calling King Jack suited. It's still a very playable hand in position. You know, the the more the slightly more marginal ones. So here we're calling hands like Jack Nine suited. I think we could let that go. Ace Nine and King Nine suited for sure. We should let go because it's folding half the time, calling half the time. And then like fours, fives, four or five suited, we can probably let those go. These again aren't really like super high EV hands anyway. We just want board coverage. Yeah, we call. And there's not much we can do on this flop. We're going to be doing a lot of floating. Uh, when we have two overs and back doors, it's kind of annoying seeing. So he checks and then we check, which I think is, I guess, standard. I, I don't think we want to put more m much money in with this hand. The thing is, it's going to get annoying by the river because he's just going to have a lot of ace highs and win. But this isn't a hand I really want to bluff a lot of. And 
The thing is, I think that if we bet two streets, he can still call, and I'm not tripling this hand. So I honestly just think that the way you played that fine. The problem is, it's so obvious to me in a lot of cases, not all the time, but in a lot of cases that we are going to just check back and we're going to lose to ace queen. Every now and then you'll see like some random 10-9 suited or something that just decided to give up. But So uh, queen 10 suited, we open another gun and the button three bets. This is a fold, I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look what it's recommending here. Okay, so we've got more bluffs in terms of four betting, but because we're not opening that much under the gun anyway, we're doing a reasonable amount of folding, but look, now we're actually four betting more than we're calling here. That's the difference between being in position and being out of position. So if we look at under the gun versus small blind where we're in position, look at how much we're calling. 80 combos as opposed to 16. So six six to one, whereas here it's basically even. We're actually four betting more than we're, than we're calling here. So queen 10 suited, definitely a fold. Queen jack suited, even folding here, which feels tight, but I mean, it is. I'm probably calling queen jack suited because... Because it's queen jack suited and it just looks dead sexy. But good to see that you fold in the queen 10 suited. I would without a doubt fold queen 10 suited here. Ace nine here versus a three X. I'm just going to let this go. It's good that it even says the size here. So that's pretty cool. But look at what it's, look at what it's three bet five betting. So basically only three bet five betting aces, aces, kings and ace king. This is kind of different anyway, because if you get four bet under the gun versus button, I assume we're just not really bluffing a lot. That's kind of different. Three bet calling little fraction of these hands again mainly for board coverage but this is what we're calling ace nine is not even in it for versus a 2.5x you probably could at the lower stakes i don't especially if you're against weaker opponents because they're not going to press you as much but i actually like this I, li I like that we're calling um it's not three bet and ace queen off at any frequency some ranges will i generally wouldn't i'm probably just three bet and the ace queen suited uh, which is such a good hand i i do like this that it's got what we're three bet calling and what we're three bet five betting uh, and what we're three bet folding I, li I like that it has these in it. A lot of people always ask like, oh yeah, but if we're, if we're four betting, why are we four betting? You know, with that ace queen off in position and we four bet, uh, ace queen is a four bet bluff. So it's it's good to know here that basically king queen suited is effective. It's a, it's a three bet because it's such a good hand and has a lot of playability, but it's still technically a three bet bluff. We have king high. So we're three betting king queen suited because it's a good hand, got good playability, got good blockers, but it's still technically a bluff. And if we get four bet in those positions and being out of position, then we have to fold. Ace queen suited is different because we're going to block some of his strongest hands, such as aces, which is very important. And then we have more equity against a lot of those hands anyway. So kings, we have the easiest squeeze anyone's ever seen. Let's see what size you choose here. 12.4, I'm a big fan of it. So the w easy way for me, uh, the easy way that I would say to remember, especially the lower stakes, uh, again, talking about simplifying, is when we're three betting, three bet, three times their raise in position, four times their raise out of position, somewhere in that vicinity. A little bit bigger, a little bit smaller maybe, de depending on opponent and stack size, but somewhere around three times their raise in position, four times out of position. When there's a caller, a raise and a call, we want to go slightly bigger. So I would say 4x the raise, maybe plus their big blind. So that would be basically this kind of size. So 2.6 times 4 would be 10.4, 12.4. So it would be 13 big blinds. And this is close to 13 big blinds. I, I, I like this sizing. If I could pick a perfect size, it would probably be this because they're not actually playing full stacks either. So we don't need to go as big. So, big fan of this, like the sizing. And we get four bet, which means he's got aces, but good luck to him. <laughs> uh, and we're squeezing the uh, King Jack suited as well. And we're going 14, so around 3x. This could, be, this could be smaller because we're in position. So this could be a little bit smaller here. So we're basically going five times here, which I think is fine. And then we're going around five times here which I think is a little bit too big because we're in position. The beauty about, also, he's not got a full stack as well, so this is definitely too big. Make sure you pay attention to stack sizes, especially in Ignition, because nobody plays a full fucking stack. So this is slightly too big, I think. The good thing about being in position is that you force them to be in a spot, especially him. Like, if he's playing correctly, which he's probably not, it's very hard for him to do a lot, because if he calls... He can be, he can call because he's getting a good price and he's out of position to two players. So he's going to have to fall back a lot more, meaning that we can just make it smaller to one, put a lot of pressure on him and two, save money when he does fall back. Uh, sorry, did this guy, did this motherfucker just fall back fold off this stack? If he's going to do the thing is this fall back size is terrible in general. 
especially off that stack. He can literally just go, again, talking about being in position, it's so hard for you to realize your equity. If he just goes 23, 24, it's fine. Even though we're getting a good price, we're out of position. I have to do a lot of check folding. But yeah, not nicely played with the king, so I like the sizing. It's pretty standard. A lot of pre-flop spots in this one so far, which I think, yeah, I think you're playing pretty well. I think it's fine. Good to see that we're through betting the king jack suited. Again, sizing slightly on the large size, but is what it is. So jack nine, blind on blind, definitely an open. It was open in jack nine plus, I think. It wasn't open in jack eight or jack seven. I'm going to be betting small on this flop. This is actually the first flop that we've that we've got to here. I don't like that we only have a, that, that your smallest. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it here on the bottom left, but I really don't like that your smallest auto bet size here is half pot. We should have a third pot bet. I know at smaller stakes, people like to bet bigger, which I think is okay because it maximizes fold equity as well as getting more money in the pot for when we good, have good hands. But I still think just, I do want to, uh, I do want to, I like the idea of simplification, but like simplifying it to just half pot or more is just, no, I think we should have a third pot sizing because we want to be able to bet thin for value as well. I, I just don't think we need to go this big on this flop because think about what it achieves. Why are you going this big, Tyler? Like for, specifically for what reason? No, we don't want to rep Asex. This hand is basically like, this is this is a good hand. Like we, we, we want to value bet this hand effectively. If we're trying to rep Asex when we have a nine, we therefore need him to fold a better nine, which he's just not going to do. So we don't need to go that big. We can just go smaller here. You don't want to get into the mindset of, oh, I've got a second pair. I want to bet to get him to fold worse hands, like overcard. Yes, protection is something, is part of the reason why we bet, but the primary reasons for betting, one is for value, the other one is as a bluff. I think I'm just going to bet small with quite a lot of my range here because we can connect with it quite a lot. So, and then we can start double or tripling. I don't hate the bet. I just think it was a little too big. Ace Jack on the button ski. There we go for the three bet. And again, I'm just going to flick into the ranges because I am curious more than anything else what it wants to three bet. Okay, so we are basically three betting all of these colors. So we're three betting just absolute tons. Basically, all of our suited aces, you could literally extrapolate this. I've seen some ranges three bet queen jack off here. I don't particularly like it. I prefer folding, which is what Raise Your Edge does. So for reference, Raise Your Edge doesn't have a flatting range at any point it's literally three battle fold which i think is absolutely fine so we had um in the bluff the spot it has a calling range button versus the earlier positions again about simplification we can just ignore that for now and we can just three battle fold it just makes makes it a lot easier so yeah ace, ace jack it's three betting ace 10 it's three betting as well which a little bit loose but i think it's fine and that's what we're three bat folding and then three bat and calling a four bat we're, we're, we're doing a lot more of this than anything else because again, in position, we get to realize equity and it's choosing hands like aces as well because the stack to pot ratio is going to be low and they're going to be doing a lot of bluffing. So we want to have some traps. So I'm going to I'm going to sneak a cheeky ace five suited in there. I don't really like peeling a four bet with ace five suited. So I'm I'm, I'm going to jam in ace five suited. But that's because I'm fucking well hard. So. All right, we got our first fun spot here. Jesus, I actually just don't want to do anything on this board. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I'm actually almost in a way glad that he took our decision away from us. So let's say you had checked. I honestly don't even think I like betting this board. There's so many bluffs that we can have on here that just are a lot better. Like even ace jack of diamonds is infinitely better because we can turn flush draws. Here it's just such, it's so bad for us. He has like a lot of seven, eight suited, some nine, ten suited. He's got like fours, sevens, nines. It's actually a really shit flop for us. I think we just check back. I don't think it's a range bet on that board. Stop saying range bet. All you do is, all you do, Alex, is come in, come into the thing. I'm going to solve this spot and I bet you it's not a fucking range bet. 974, three bet pot. Doing some checking, meaning it's not a range bet. Alex, I'm going to be nice to you. I'm going to give you a 10 minute timeout instead of banning you for a week. Consider yourself lucky. Now, now go and think about what you've done. Again, I'm, I'm talking more, you know, I don't want to go too much into solvers because at the end of the day, this is fucking five zoom on ignition. If you use a solver for five zoom on an ignition, you are an idiot because what you should have done is use the money that you spent for a solver to put in your fucking bankroll to play higher stakes on ignition to win more money. Jack 10 suited, easy open under the gun. Ace 8 suited will be an open from this position. So here, out of position, we want to do more checking, but this board's really good for us. So because it's quite disconnected, yeah, there's a flush draw, but King 8 deuce is really good for the Razor in general. So we can just bet small on this board. I I'm just going to bet pretty much, I guess, out of position. 
I'm still batting. We turn a flush because life is easy. Let's have a look. So I wouldn't hate a big bat here. I wouldn't hate a smaller bat. Quite a strong draw. Block some King X hands that you could have. King Tan and Jack Tan off. Uh, King Tan and King Jack off. Turn a flush and I just want to put loads of money in here. I just want to put as much money as I can. I'm just betting part on the Jammin' River. No, don't like it. And probably once I've checked, I actually am okay going for the over bet. So a couple of reasons why I don't love it. If I have any, um, you know, Broadway aces, ace 10, ace jack, if I, have, if I have any 10 jack, I'm probably barreling the turn. I guess I don't have that many bluffs. Anyway, against a guy not playing a full stack who's flattered, I just want to put as much money in it as I can. The good thing about a flush, we unblock the two pairs and stuff. So like he could have a hand like king queen or like queen eight of hearts. So I'm just going to bet near enough pot here so I can jam. In fact, betting pot will be 14, so 28. Yeah, I'd bet pot and then jam the river for pot. And if he folds, good luck to him. The thing is as well with fish, what you need to understand is that they, they'll, they'll take a lot of passive options whenever they can. So like if we, if we check, they're going to do a lot of checking back. But like they'll call like big bets even though they check back the turn. Like honestly, it, it, I've seen it so often. I've seen so many fish that will have something like king nine off with the nine of spades. They're calling pretty much any size but they don't want to put money in themselves. So I think batting is infinitely better here. It's not like we he has a, a hundred big blinds behind. If he has a hundred big blinds behind, I can understand it because we want to check raise to get as much money in on the turn as possible. Whereas here, when the stack to pot ratio is this size, we can just bat pot, leaving us with a basically a pot size bat, bat behind. And then yeah, over, over batting here is fine. Or just batting pot, just batting big. Ace five suited here. I think most rangers use this as a three, but I'm just always three betting here. Yeah, let's see the size in. So two, four, six. So I would say somewhere around three X in position. This is slightly more than three X, but then again, we're slightly deeper. So I actually think this is perfect. I don't think you need to worry too much. The difference is between 100 and 120 big blinds. But if you're not rat holing and you're playing 150 big blinds or deeper, we want to pick bigger sizes when we are deeper in general. And I like this flop. I, I want to bet here because I want to protect as well as we can technically get value but again because you only have this half pot size and we really don't need to pick these sizes here okay so what does this bet achieve when we're going three quarters pot here like why are we betting this tyler we don't why would we ever ever want a better ace to fold why would we ever want a better ace to fold let's say we have ace five of hearts he has ace ten of spades we have 76 percent chance of winning we're going to win this three times out of four why would we want him to fold ace jack or ace ten of spades? We don't want him to fold those hands. We want him to call those hands. Your logic's wrong, and I think I see where it's going as well, because if we like brief back on these notes from the notes that you you'd put there, I won't put them up just in case you don't really want to show it. But it said, you know, about being anxious in bigger parts that you don't want about you don't want to lose buy-ins and stuff like that. This is so fucking common in people. You really need to be comfortable losing. I'm still not, right? I played poker for 12 years. I still fucking hate losing, probably more than a lot of people. You need to just like get over it effectively. If you're betting with the intention of trying to get people to fold worse hands, that is terrible. Yeah, they're going to outdraw you sometimes and it's going to suck. Yeah, you're going to be put in some tough spots and stuff. It's going to suck, but that's not the reason why we want to bet here. It's not the reason we want to bet big here. Protection is something that's going to be useful here because we have a weak pair. So if he folds something like Queen Jack of Diamonds, that's kind of okay. So let's have a look at his equity with Queen Jack of Diamonds. Similar. I I, I get what you're saying, but it, it's we, we don't want to bet big just for that reason. We wanna we wanna bet we wanna bet small. It still has the same effect for a hand like this. Now if he calls Ace Jack suited but folds Queen Jack of Diamonds to a small size but then folds them both to a big size, we should just use the small size because we want him to call with the ace jack of di uh, the ace jack of spades, for example. Betting at a small size is still going to get all this nonsense that has a bit of equity to fold. The problem is, is that when you bet bigger, let's say, let's extrapolate it ridiculously and say you jam for 113 big blinds, right? Like, what can you call with? Like, yeah, you're going to have fold equity. You're actually going to get hands like eights and sevens to fold, but then he's just going to fold all the time with hands that you are ahead of and then call with like 9x where you just have no no equity. I just want to get that logic out of your head that that we, we don't want to bet big for protection. Betting, we don't want to bet in just solely for protection. We can value bet this effectively. It does really help that we have, that it, it works for protection, but we want to pick a small size. And the reason why I'd love to bet this for protection, if I'm going to check, I might check with like aces, right? But the good thing about betting this is there's so many overcards, six, seven, eight, 10, 
Jack, Queen, King, right? There's so much in the deck that's, that then devalues our hand that betting this hand makes a lot of sense for sure, but this big size doesn't really make sense. And I do think that at these stakes, yeah, we can go bigger than maybe a third. If you wanted to bet half pot, maybe I'd understand it. But the bigger you bet, the more he has to fold, and that's bad when we have good hands. On this turn, I'm probably just checking. King Jack, we open on the left. I think it's fine. This is more marginal, by the way, especially when we're opening 3x. So just be careful of this. However, it's ignition. So I think I like the check, and this is a this is a really shit run out. We just pray checks and we check back. And this is just dumb. I can I can understand the call. I think he should check raise that flop. He should definitely check raise when he has spades, but Okay, so I think I would fold here. The problem is we're getting a fucking unreal price. We're getting over four to one. So we need to be right, like Less than one in five times. So I can understand this call because we're getting such an amazing price. The problem is when somebody picks this size, I think they're going to be weighted towards value quite a lot on a board like this. It's just going to be like sevens or like eight X or I guess maybe you could have ace five as well. Believe me, I'm not happy about this when I call, but because it's such a ridiculous price, I think I might have to call. In any case, so I really don't like the call. I really don't like calling because it just... It feels very valuey when somebody does this, but I can forgive it because we're getting such an amazing price. All suited aces we can open from every position, according to these ranges. Some I don't open a six suited under the gun. I'm gonna make a video where it's just me. Again, the, these big sizes, I think we need to cut this out, but I, I don't mind betting this flop again. You've had a lot of these more marginal hands, to be fair, where I think betting is okay because we do want to protect our hand because there's a lot of bad turn cards. So I think betting for protection is okay. I think in general, we don't really need to go that big on boards that are not necessarily good for us. I think just going half part or smaller is fine. Absolute fun six of spades on the turn and we want to bet here and betting big's okay, but betting this big is getting kind of thin. Now, it is a very strong hand, but the bigger we bet, the, the more he has to fold. Like he can't, if we have a flush, I think betting bigger is, e is even better. Like let's say we have the nut flush, I think betting that size is fine. You've got to, you've got to look at what we're trying to target. So when we bet big on this turn here, we are basically saying that we are polar. So we're going to have an extremely strong hand or a very weak hand. This is an extremely strong hand, but like only just. Like, he's not going to have many 6x hands since it's a 6 of spades on the turn, so we can't have 6x of spades. Like, he probably shouldn't be calling a hand like 6-4 of hearts on, on the flop versus a big size. When we're betting this turn, even just in a vacuum from a, a hand point of view rather than a range point of view, we, are, we need to target a 10, so we don't want to bet too big. We also want to pot control a bit when he has if he has flushes. So we don't need to go this big. I like a big bet, but going like 8 or 9 big blinds is absolutely fine. I think going basically pot is just, you know, if he has like 10 jack of like diamonds, he, he could just fold here and not be worried about it. And he might even have a 10 there and fold. Nine's here, three way, just checking. What goes through your mind when you, when you do this? Like, again, why are we betting? Nine's is a really bad hand. It's not a range bet. Three way, nothing is a range bet. Every single time you, if you hear the term range bet, it's because a solver wants to bet their entire range. And guess what solvers solve? Heads up, we're not heads up. It doesn't, it doesn't extrapolate. It doesn't be like, all oh, right, okay, so we've got a king 10-4, we're six way, we raised and five people called, we should bet range on this board. Think about it, how ridiculous would that be? The thing is king 8-4, we could, we could probably bet as well because we can still get caught by worse. This doesn't achieve anything. It's hard to differentiate because King 10 4 and King 8 4 are very different. The King and the 10 bring a lot of straight draws Ace Jack, Ace Queen, Queen, Queen Jack, Jack 9, Queen 9. King 8 4, yeah, they've still got straight draws like 5 6 and stuff like that, but it's more disconnected. When you're in a spot and you, you can't, like, your hand betting doesn't really get any better hands to fold and it doesn't get any worse hands to call, it's probably better to just check in position. Especially three-way. I really don't like this bet. I think this mistake, this bet's a mistake. I won't go on about it too much. Because I could talk about that spot forever. It's really hard to instill the logic. Not a fan of the queen jack off another gun. I assume your rangers say it's to open. Uh, this is kind of an annoying board. I don't hate betting small in these fields against a fun player. But this is a really bad hand to have. So I'm okay checking. If we had a bet, I'd be doubling. Now that it's gone check, check. I'm probably betting this turn. And then I might follow through on some rivers. Not that one, just check.
Hey Tyler, if we bet here, why are we betting? Specifically, why are we betting? What What is your intention here? If anything, we have to bet bigger here, Supermaster. So why are we betting, Tyler? Deny Ace High Showdown. Right, but <clears throat> again, Tyler, you, you're missing the point. What is your bet trying to achieve? Specifically, what are you trying to do when you bet big here? Is this a bluff or a value bet? Tell me that first. It's a bluff. What do you think he's going to fold that's better than your hand? So are you telling me that you're betting queen high to specifically target king high? If so, specifically what king highs does he have that check calls the turn? So going back to that flop where I said the 10 6, 6 2 diamonds, we said that we want to pick our best bluffs. Our best bluffs on flop and turn are bluffs where we have a lot of equity, but we have no showdown. Our best bluff on the river, hands that block some strong hands, but also we need to be low down in our range. Think about what you're specifically trying to target. From you saying that we're trying to get king high to fold, you're assuming ace high doesn't fold. If we have seven high, then I think we have to bluff. Because then we'd unblock queen jack, we'd unblock ten jack. And those hands beat us that can fold. We, the lower down in our range we are, the better our bluff works. Think about it. Would you ever bluff ace high here? No, because you'd need pocket tens or an eight or a nine to fold. So you'd never bluff ace high on the river. Would you bluff king high? No, because you need ace high to fold. Would you bluff queen high? Apparently so. The lower down you get, the, the, the more likely you are to bluff. We do not need to bluff this. If he has sixes, sevens, fives, fours, we are now ahead of him. If he has ten jack, we are ahead of him. If he has ace ten, he's not going to fold. This does fuck all. Maybe we target king highs. He could even call king highs. I hope he calls you a king high. Obviously, it's not fold. But you probably have the best hand when it's not fold. We're blocking the hands that we want him to fold, that we want him to have. Ten jack, queen jack. Apparently, king queen and king jack, which you, you think check call the turn, which is possible. So when I said, somebody said to me ages ago, what makes a good bluff on the river? Somebody said, it doesn't matter. I say, you know, you've got to be low down in your range. And someone was like, no, you don't have to be. It's more about blockers and unblockers. That's fucking bullshit. Because if we're at the top of our range for, like, bluffs, it's going to work less. If we have pocket threes here, we get so much more to fold because we have three high. We get four high to fold, pocket fours. Five high to fold, four five of diamonds. Six high to fold, five six. Seven high to fold, six seven. It gets more possible hands to fold, so our bluff works better. So it hence forth is a better bluff. Don't three about the size two suited. Just don't bother. It doesn't even want to do it full frequency with these two. So we definitely don't want to do it with all of these. I uh, Look how tight it is as well. 2%, 2%, 3%. Look how, like, we're just mucking eights here. Like, we're, we're literally only playing these because just our board coverage. Nines. Tens it wants to fold sometimes, man. So yeah, I don't, I don't like the ace two suited three, but ace tens is easy open though. Okay, ace 10 here on the right. Uh, this board, we want to be careful on, but I think this hand makes a pretty good bet. So we have the, the ace of clubs, which means we can... I mean, it's annoying that he's playing 50 bigs, but we have the ace of clubs. We have a gut shot, so we can we can go nuts on, on clubs because we'll turn the, the nut draw. And here you go. Here's an example why we don't want to three bet too much because we still have four players left to act. So just a waste of nine big blinds, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, about the turn. The river's kind of thin, but I think against fun players, we can just bet. It's, it's kind of unlikely as a better hand. Ace-jack, maybe. And I think we go for a small bet, considering what we're trying to target. Could even go smaller than this. I think it's fine. Half pot. We win. So this is a hand we could three bet. Big blind versus under the gun. It's a hand I love to three bet, especially versus rags. This guy's a fun player. He's made it a big size. Please don't fold. Yeah, I think calling's the only option here. Just too sexy of a hand. Maybe there's argument for folding. I'm, I, ain't, I ain't making that argument. Versus a small size, just check calling. If he'd have actually bombed it here, if he'd have bet like pot, I would have... I'd, you'd just have to fold. I don't think we want to do much raising. He just has a load of strong hands here. Even as a fun player, he's not necessarily thinking in terms of ranges. He's not going to be like, oh, I've got advantage here. I'm going to bet a lot. But he's just going to have a lot of very good hands. And then we just have to check fold the turn. And I've put these spots into solvers because it just doesn't feel good to check call, check fold. Uh, on this board, obviously it does because we can be drawing dead, but there's just nothing else we can do here. It's it's not even... It's, there's literally no decision. 
Good to see you folded. Literally calling that wouldn't just be bad, it would be fishy. Like, actually fishy. That, that's what fish would genuinely do. As many as six. Why six? You could make this four. Five, I, I, I wouldn't have batted an eyelid, but six is just... Where does it end? He's only got 40 big blinds, man. Fucking hell, chill. Real good flop. On the right-hand side, this is checked to us in a limp part. I, we want to bet this turn for value and protection. Here, this flop, I think we can just bet. This is the perfect example of, like, a, a board where we can just bet small with our entire range here. So, to be fair, I don't mind going bigger with such a strong hand against a fun player, but again, we don't really need to because it's, we can probably get the money in relatively smoothly. Uh, this is kind of an annoying card. I'm betting the turn small, though. And then shove in the river anyway. And if he's got an ace, just good luck to him. No, what the f what are you, what are you doing? Have you paid attention to his stack in this hand? W why are you betting this size? What on earth is this? Uh, so the jack six, I think we should have bet. Why, specifically, why are we betting? And why are we betting seventeen big blinds? And now we decide to go for the bet when there's four to a straight with the jack six instead of on the turn when we had you know a good second pair. Now there's four to a straight. We decide that we're going to try and bet. I mean, it worked. <laughs> I feel as though you're trying to play too much in terms of ranges or something. That oh, It's a good card for our range. We have some really good strong hands. Like, King-Queen doesn't make sense as a bat. There are spots that even in solvers, they're going to check some hands because it doesn't make sense to bat. And we're just going to bat a polar range on the turn. The thing is as well, whenever you bat with a strong hand, we have a pretty strong hand. He's got some ace -X, but not that many. When we bat a hand for value, we need worse hands to call. Betting 17 big blinds just forces all of his worst hands out. We could even check to allow him to bluff. There's a, definitely a lack of, of understanding. If we were going 17 big blinds, when he has 14 big blinds after that. Did you pay attention to his stack? It, it, if you're getting confused when you're on two tables, play one table. Don't play Zoom. Play a couple of tables of regular tables. Take a bit longer to decide. So take a bit longer. So we bet big on the flop, which I don't hate. And then the turn comes, and it's like, okay. And you've just gone, you just start scrolling up, like, oh, what size am I going to bet here? Like, think about why we're betting. I like, think, just think for a minute. Like, just one table and think for a minute and be like, okay. What do I want to do here? He's got 31 big blinds left. There's 27 big blinds in, in the middle. Do I want to check and allow him to bluff? Or do I want to bet small so that he calls with worse? The time bank's shit, but like, I mean, that is really shit, actually. 15 seconds is horrible. Still got six seconds left. That's going to add all kinds of pressure as well. I think you get a 20 second extra time bank as well on ACR for 100 and out, and that's not enough for me. I think you get like 10 seconds, then an extra 20. And so many times I've been on the river and I've just been like, I actually just can't. I have to just fold. Check A2, so we defend. Uh, easy continue here. Just calling. There's not much merit in raising. That sucks. He checks. Just check back. Tyler, why do, why why have we bet here on the left? Why are we betting eight big blinds into 12 big blinds when he's got 33 big blinds behind? What are we trying to achieve specifically with our jack eight? Are we value betting? Is it a bluff? On the right-hand side, we three bet the ace queen. I think it's fine versus cutoff. I'm mainly calling. Let's actually have a look at the ranges. Yeah, it's just pure calling here. I think calling is just easier. And then we three bet it versus bottom. But I'm, I'm mainly just calling. For simplification's sake, I think it's easier calling ace queen versus cutoff. But what, again, what does this bet achieve? Are we trying to get a worse hand to call, i.e. are we betting for value? Or are we trying to get a better hand to fold? Are we betting for bluff? Bet larger for protection. What are you trying to protect against? It's, it's, it's really not good logic. You're turning a hand that has showdown into a bluff. Stop trying to protect everything. It's like you're scared of getting outdrawn in every part and you're like, oh, I'm just going to bet loads so we fold. I feel like when a small blind checks on the turn, I always have the best hand. Okay, not always, but I agree, you have the best hand a lot. Doesn't mean we should bet. Shouldn't always bet when we have the best hand or when we assume to have the best hand. Because if we can't get called by a worse hand, we can't value bet. If we can't get a better hand to fold, then we can't bluff. If we're going to bet, bet really small to get called by worse. Get called by like pocket eights, pocket sevens, ace ten. Sometimes, Tyler, people are going to outdraw you. That's going to happen. It's poker. Don't be worried about... Everyone's so fucking scared of losing a buy-in or losing the pot. You're going to lose some pots. Deal with it. Kings, easy three bet. We could maybe go a bit bigger than nine because we're 150 bigs deep. I really don't like playing 150 bigs deep. 
Mainly because when somebody four bets, they just have aces. And I'm like, oh, I've got queens, I'll call, and then call down. And then they have aces, and I'm like, well, I knew you had aces. You're four bet, 150 big blinds deep. Ha! <laughs> um, shoving or calling here, fine. I'm probably... I lean towards calling because I just call my entire range here. So I don't do any five bet shoving for 150 bigs or 155 bigs. I only call. But if we're going to shove, shove ace, king, and kings, I guess. Show me pocket aces. And that's why we could uh, that's why we could call as well, because we keep his bluffs in, so. At least pre-flop, there's not really much you need to iron out. Mate, that ace time was a bit shit. I didn't like the call. I don't like you opening queen jack off under the gun. Some spots where we defended randomly. I'm, I'm just always calling this ace king here. I'm never four bet in this this deep. If I, if I am, I'd four bet fold, but I think just calling makes more sense. We're in position. I do like the size, though, if, when we're four-betting. I like the size. I like the size. It's pretty flat. He calls. Oh, my God. This is just... I, I really don't know what to say here because I, I am not often in four-bet parts 160 bigs deep under the gun versus big blind. The fun thing is is that I, I think that we can bet really small because he shouldn't really be doing a lot of raising because we block aces and kings. He's probably going to five-bet those. And so he's not exactly going to be thrilled check raise getting in jacks, is he? Like 20 bags, we just call here. Raising way too thin. And hope he doesn't absolutely hammer the river. Ah, call. Hope you chop, I guess. <laughs> That's why I don't like 4 Ben. Like when you're that deep. People don't really 3 bet that deep. 3 bet that wide when you're deep. And he. The reason I think he flatted kings is because he was a bit worried. It's a fucking cooler, but we didn't need to fall back. We can just call. Why are we calling all of a sudden? I thought we were just three battle folding. What, what have you done this for? Just three battle fold. And look, you should flop a set. <laughs> right, just bet big, fuck it. I'd over bet the turn here because there's so many draws. So I'd be betting 18 big blinds because we want to get as much money in as, as we can. Betting part's fine. He can still have a lot of, like, ace-jack, like... Can't have 10x of hearts, but he can still have, like, ace-king of hearts, like... Still some queen-x of hearts. He can have so much that what really wants to continue here. So I think over betting's good. Uh, Jack's not a great river, but he really shouldn't have ace-king here, unless he has ace-king of hearts. And if he's got pocket jacks, which is possible, good luck to him. Yeah, just bet big. Hope he's got queen-jack. I uh, like the sizing. Please don't go all in, sir. Not good, we got a call, but. And it's. I'm kind of glad that's over just because I'm really fucking tired, man. In any case. I don't think he played. Right, pre flop was okay. I think pre flop was was fine for the majority of it. Ignore poker snow, snowy, snowy ranges that they're, they're a bit off, but they're not like massively way off. I don't understand what it was calling for with tens, so I'm not really sure about that. Go back to this video and just listen to all the things i said about like the fundamentals that were wrong like when you when you're betting big just to protect your hand it's not a thing betting small is okay because we can get worse hands to, to call in spots like that with that jack eight it just it just it was just not good but overall not that i, I still think you'll be making money i think what you should do is go down to one table that that 15 second time bank is fucking ri ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and when you're on two tables that's really gonna hurt that's really gonna hurt there are a lot of ba bad rivers with that jack eight hand for example but doesn't mean we're not allowed to check back doesn't mean we're not allowed to check to somebody else when we have a good hand like just consider checking is an option as well we don't always have to bet